Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, the new plugin ecosystem in Rudder. Uh, anyone using Rudder here? Yeah? <laughs> okay. So for the one using, you will, may find new features. And for the one who are not already using Rudder, you may find reason to use Rudder. I hope. <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, just uh, first uh, we'll go to, we're going to see uh, what plugins are, how they work, what they can do in Rudder. Um, so a plugin is just an extension of Rudder. And uh, we created a new package format for this plugin. Well, we didn't create it completely from scratch. We reused what existed. And uh, it can be installed on Rudder server on, or on Rudder relays. Um, so you never have to install plugins on the agents because uh, if it's the case, the agent will automatically download what they need from the server. And you can extend anything in Rudder. So how does it work? Well, there are two kinds of plugins. Uh, here's the, the, the Rudder, how Rudder works. And uh, you can have the nodes. You can have node that points to relays and relay that point to the Rudder server. Or you can have node that point directly to Rudder server. And there are different kind of plugins. There are plugins that are integration plugins. They are made to make Rudder talk with something else. There are feature plugins that are made to add new feature to Rudder and to extend uh, how it works precisely. And there may be some plugin that can be integrated into relays directly, but can, currently we don't have such kind of plugins. Um, so how, first I'll describe how we, how the plugin is, what is in, inside the plugin. We did a bit like uh, Debian does. So a plugin is just an archive file, so you can extract easily uh, metadata from the from this file. It's just one command, and you can have everything that was from the file. And in the file, there's also uh, a list of scripts that are triggered automatically during installation, removal, and uh, before and after ins installation and removal. And every file that are needed for the plugin to work uh, in a, di a different uh, archive that is within the main uh, archive. Uh, so this, ma this makes uh, easily installing Rudder easy because you just have to install it and everything is done uh, in post-install scripts. And we try as far as possible to not break anything when you remove a plugin, which means you added a feature, you used this feature, and now the feature is just disabled, but it's not, it doesn't break uh, the, your policies, even if you wrote some policies with this plugin. <coughs> Package are generated directly from our source code, and uh, you can install with this command. So this command is provided with Rudder, and you just install the file, and it installs the plugin directly. You still have to download the plugin manually. Uh, we, don't, we haven't written yet a real package manager that does everything for you. So it doesn't go and download the plugin and that everything. You have to do it by yourself. And dependencies are not yet managed automatically. Uh, we know the dependencies, so we print them in uh, during installation, but you have to install them. Um, since Rudder is made for this, we know, we have what we need to to do this to install dependencies. So in, in next version, we will probably make this automatic. A plugin have a version. We version plugin with this scheme. So we have first the Rudder version it is compatible with, and then the plugin version. So the first part indicates on which version of Rudder you should install this plugin. And the second part indicates the real version of the plugin, the one that uh, it is compatible, uh, the, well, it is incremented each time there's a new version of the plugin. So here's an example for the Sentry on plugin. Uh, there's the same plugin is provided twice, one for each version of Rudder. So this is the same plugin, just a different uh, Rudder version. Some plugins are completely free, the GPL, especially every plugin that integrates Rudder with uh, free software, of course. And some plugins are not free because, for example, we integrate with proprietary plugins, with proprietary OS, 
So we, to add those kind of support, we, uh, we have not made completely free plugins. And some plugins are not free, uh, but are features, and uh, that they are dedicated to big players. Um, plugins that are not free need a license, so you have to install a license, download it, and uh, so just come and see us if you want a license, if you want to try one plugin, and uh, we'll be happy to, to deliver a demo license. So just a quick note, uh, the plugins are not uh, plugins and every Rudder package are now uh, available at repository.rudder.io. Uh, it was not the case before. I think Alexi uh, talked about it earlier, so I won't extend too much. It contains everything that can be downloaded uh, at Rudder. So let's go into the different plugins we have. Um, first, uh, the, the, the feature plugin kind. Um, there will be more of them. So to report, customize, etc. Uh, so the first one, the reporting plugin. The reporting plugin is a way to store and archive historical data uh, from Rudder. So Rudder have and presents you um, data from uh, every agent, combine them, and you can read them, you can have access to them, but you don't have access to the old results. Um, because it's a lot of data. So we made a plugin that keeps an history of, the, of this data and you can extract it and make a proper report that you can easily export to PDF or you can view, you can customize the report. And so you can have the, the real uh, data you need uh, using this plugin. It's, for example, if you want to show your, your boss that uh, you are working properly, or if you want to show that uh, why something happened last week, uh, you can have the, the report that tells you that this machine or this rule has broken last week because of something that is in this report. And you can have an history of everything that happened on your platform. So here's what it looks like. So you first have uh, the history of the compliance. This one is not very good. I uh, hope you don't have this one. And uh, here is the, the history of what has changed on your platform. You can filter this. You don't have to, to have everything, of course, because it can be very long. But you can filter some very interesting parts and uh, have them just in, uh, in your report. Um, <clears throat> another plugin is a customization plugin. You can customize rudder look and feel. Um, it's a bit, uh, you cannot customize everything. You just customize what it, uh, what the login page looks like and what the header of Rudder looks like. This is more intended to, to make Rudder, to make uh, the user know which version of Rudder he is using. For example, if you have a development environment and a production environment, you can differentiate them and at first look know where you are and, and know on which environment you are. So here's what it looks like. So you just have a header somewhere here and a header everywhere in Rudder. Um, and you can have more messages and some in, within Rudder. Um, another plugin, <coughs> you can uh, give access rights, specific access rights to users in Rudder. And you can give access rights for, well, for people, for scripts, so for access via the API and access via the web interface. And you can have named uh, token, so you can uh, attribute access to script that uh, run on behalf of a user. And you can give write access, read access to Rudder interface or to some part of Rudder or to some API within Rudder. So you can just give access to uh, to the node configuration uh, part, or just to to read uh, what is within those uh, nodes, or anything that can be done via the API or the web interface. Um, there's a workflow plugin. The workflow is also named the change request. This means that you can uh, work 
with other people that don't have the same uh, that um, how do say that pre-register uh, what they wanted to do, so they create a change request. Um, when they created a change request, someone reviews the change request and accepts it or refuses it. So this makes easier to, to spot errors because there's more people looking at what you are changing and less people, uh, uh, less problems go the speed through. And it's easy for new people in the team because so they can uh, just uh, not change directly the production. They can make change requests and uh, you can accept or refuse them and detect before the change is going to production what is going on. Um, well, this is how it works. So you have two people and uh, one who make requests and one who validates the, those requests. Um, do you know of node properties? A node property is uh, a key value that you put on your node in Rudder. So you have uh, for each node uh, the, the ability to add new keys and new values um, to them that are specific to those nodes. So it's usually things that are not, that cannot be uh, detected directly by Rudder and that have to, to be provided by something else. So by default in Rudder, it's provided by the user that goes into the interface and say, this machine is in production, this machine is uh, something, something else. And uh, you can also automatically feel those, pro those properties from outside. And so this plugin allow, permits to feel those properties from a database. I just have to, to provide a, data, a database some queries, and it will fill automatically the properties from this database. Uh, yeah, so the, the data source plugin uh, read the database and fills properties within the Rudder server, and those properties can then be used in uh, in rules that will be applied to every Rudder node. Another plugin is the um, relay. So this existed before; it was not a plugin, and it has been made a plugin. Uh, a relay is used to divide your network. It allows you to have only um, streams that are from uh, the agent to the relay, and then from the relay to the server, but no open flow from the from nodes directly to the server. So you have less uh, ports to open in your firewalls, less rules, and you can isolate more uh, the, your infrastructure. And since relays serve directly all nodes, you can extend easily uh, Rudder to more nodes because you have more machine to serve uh, the same, uh, the same um, policies to nodes. Um, just one thing. Okay. <laughs> So here is the, 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 what I said just before. The relay here can act as a relay, a proxy, something, uh, between your node and the root server. This is the usual uh, approach, and uh, you can have relays to extend, uh, to have more nodes. Um, authentication. Uh, you can have External authentication, you can have well, users in Rudder, and uh, users can be defined either in uh, the usual uh, file, as has been done before, and you can authenticate uh, the user from an LDAP or from an Active Directory, or from Radius, just in case, in, in case you have one, uh, into, into Rudder. This is, uh, this was before in Rudder, within Rudder. So if you if you are going to upgrade from Rudder before five to Rudder five, you have to be very careful of this because this becomes a plugin, and you have to install the plugin to to have the feature. And so if you don't install the plugin when upgrading to Rudder five, you may not have your users anymore. Well, you still have the users that were in the file, so you still 
are able to, to use Radar, but the, um, the user that were in LDAP before are not uh, available anymore. Um, okay, so we have uh, three kind of uh, authentication now. <coughs> well, you can authenticate you through LDAP, through Radius, and through Active Directory, which is a kind of the same as LDAP. Now, another kind of plugin. We just saw a plugin that extended Rudder, had the new features. Um, now we're going to, to see plugins that uh, permit to, to communicate between Rudder and other, pro other products. So let's start with the first one. There's an Ansible plugin. And uh, so you can write, well, Okay, so you can uh, have groups in Rudder. In Rudder, you can write groups depending on properties of a node, so or depending on the inventory of a node. So if you have a node, for example, that have a patch installed, you have a patchy group, and the, the Ansible plugin uh, export those groups and synchronize them with Ansible groups. So you can just use Ansible to run commands directly on the machine that are within the groups that are already defined in Rudder. Um, yeah. We can do the same with Rendeck. So you can, uh, you can export the groups from Rudder and have them within Rendeck and run tasks from Rendeck directly with Rudder groups. Um, Centrion. Centrion is a monitoring tool. So you can monitor um, machines uh, with Centrion directly uh, if you have written them. This means that uh, you don't have to install anything except the main Centrion server, and uh, Rudder will automatically add those machines to the server, to the monitoring, and uh, monitor them directly without uh, you having to, to do anything with Centrion. You can also change Centurion monitoring, you can add new uh, things to monitor because by default you, you monitor the, the basic system, you monitor, uh, well, if you, for example, if you use the Linux template, you monitor if it's available, if it has, uh, if it doesn't use too much RAM, too much disk, etc. But you can add more host templates from uh, Centurion into some, in, in some nodes. So you can do this directly from Rudder configuration without having to, to go to Centrium. And you should be able to monitor automatically Rudder, Rudder host, and Rudder directive status. If it's, if a critical directive is, uh, is not completely compliant, it can raise an alert in Centrium. Well, this is not working yet because we are still working on it. But it will, it will be soon. And so the goal is that you are uh, able to be um, notified when an important directive, not everyone because it can be a bit difficult to follow, uh, if any directive that is very important fails, you can be notified from the monitoring system. Yes, we are waiting for Centurion to develop this part. <laughs> Uh, so yes, the node communicates, uh, Centurion monitor the nodes, but the nodes only communicate with uh, Rudder and the, the plugin configures Centurion. So you don't have to, to go this way or for the user to, to, to use Centurion. Well, it has to, to, to show the, the results. But. We can do the same with Zabbix. So you can manage uh, all the machines uh, in Zabbix. You can monitor a machine in Zabbix. Uh, via Rudder, so Rudder just adds the machine to the Abix and uh, add the, is it called templates too? Yes, in the Abix, uh, from Rudder. So it's the same way to work. Uh, we don't have the, mo the Rudder monitoring part in, uh, in the Abix for now. Uh, not exactly the same problem, it's neither us nor them that are 
going to develop it. <laughs> yeah, but we don't have it yet. Um, GLPI, I don't know if you know GLPI. It's, uh, okay. It's an inventory tool. Um, you can have an inventory of everything you have, uh, in your platform. And since Rudder used the same tool to create its own inventory, you can use Rudder agent to send inventory directly to GLPI instead of having, instead of having a second, uh, inventory tool installed and sending itself the, to the GLPI. So the goal is just to, to simplify, uh, integration with, uh, GLPI. But if you use GLPI to install package, thing that uh, Rudder can do, but uh, if you still want to use GLPI for this, you still have to install the GLPI agent. agent. So, yes, again, there's no link here. I think we can see. There's no link here, so the, the agent directly talks to server, and it's the server that, send, that sends the inventory to GLPI. Well, there's no link here anymore. Um, next, again, we are going to talk about properties. So, you know what a node property is. Um, so, ITOP is a configuration management database. It means that it's here to, to store and to get information about your configuration, which means uh, everything you have in your platform and how it is uh, installed, what is physically in them. And you can also have a lot of information that is business information about those machines. So you have a lot of information that Rudder doesn't have. So we made a plugin to be able to synchronize some information and take some information from ITOP to put it into Rudder. So you can have, you can have properties for all the machines you have in Rudder that are not coming from technical information, but for, from, uh, information that has been filled into ITOP by another way. And ITOP has a lot of uh, source of information that are, that's available to it. And so ITOP uh, also collects some information from Rudder to make it available to people uh, doing something else. So by example, they can import the list of directives that are applied to a machine uh, to know what is configured. Um, yeah, that's a schema. Here, and it, uh, ITOP, what's not written here is that ITOP has a lot of other arrows pointing to many other softwares to collect data and to send data to many other tools. So ITOP is often viewed as a, as a central data repository about your machines. Um, ServiceNow. ServiceNow is also a configuration database. And again, uh, we use it to create node properties from information that is stored uh, remotely in ServiceNow. And you can fill automatically th those properties from, uh, from ServiceNow. And it's a synchronization. So you can put information into ServiceNow from Rudder. Uh, you can send your inventory that are detected locally in Rudder to ServiceNow. And uh, you can, uh, you can also uh, synchronize change requests with ServiceNow. The change request plugin we saw earlier uh, can be synchronized with ServiceNow and you can have a change request and the validation done within ServiceNow. If your workflow includes uh, using regularly ServiceNow, it's easier to have only one interface than many. Uh, yeah, again. <coughs> Vault. A vault is the, is a free software that, uh, store securely information, uh, so usually secrets. And, uh, if you have something to hide, because in Rudder everything is stored in the Rudder server, everything that is used for configuration is stored in the Rudder server. So if you don't trust the people that are going to, uh, use Rudder, the Rudder server, or if you, if you just don't want to share some secrets with uh, the Rudder server, just in case, because of security. You can hide those secrets within Vault and, uh, ask Rudder to retrieve them just when it, when it is going to use it. So on the node, when it is going to use some properties, it is going to take the information. So Rudder configures the node and the node 
talks to Vault to take uh, to retrieve the secret it needs. So, for example, you can store um, user password, uh, database passwords, or other kind of secret or secret keys that can be used on the agent directly. So the radar configures node, and it also, well, there's nothing here, but it also configures Vault to give access rights to some nodes, depending on which node. But there's a different user that fills the, the secrets. Um, next we have, uh, we have proprietary OS. So this is a little bit straightforward because, uh, well, it's the same, still the same radar, same things and same tool, just support, uh, new agents. So we can support AIX. Uh, AIX is not very difficult to support because it's the, it's Unix. And we were talking about Unix, about Linux, so it's more or less uh, the same way to work to let it work. So we generated about similar policies for AIX. And then we support Windows via, uh, via a plugin. And as Alexis said before, it uses DSC and PowerShell, which is a Windows native uh, configuration tool. And so it's uh, integrated and provided with Windows with recent versions. Um, yeah, so and the advantage of those plugins is that uh, you can use exactly the same uh, same rudder, same policy, same configuration for Windows and for Linux and for AIX. Um, so uh, those plugins were plugins that were already done, so you can already uh, use them, download them, or ask us uh, for a demo. And uh, but I'm going to talk about new plugins, plugins that we want to to develop, but we didn't yet develop anything. So if you have any suggestion, you're welcome. Uh, we take for suggestion for any of those plugins or for any other tool you might want. Um, so first, CVE, uh, we can have an integration with a CVE database, already experiment, experimented that. So we can download automatically recent uh, exploits and know uh, from this database uh, what is the condition that makes a system vulnerable. We have an inventory of all the platforms, so you can, we can know automatically if a package contains a vulnerable product or not. So we can say, this machine is vulnerable. And we can notify the user the list of uh, vulnerable machines. And we can create rules to patch this machine and say, I want this version of this uh, software to be installed instead of the one you already have. So this would help having uh, something more, uh, your platform secure. Uh, automatically. Um, next, uh, Foreman, we could have a plugin to, an integration plugin with Foreman. Foreman is used to deploy automatically new machines. Uh, Rudder comes after that, which means that uh, when Foreman for installs something, uh, it can install Rudder at the end of the, the new system installation. And then Rudder takes over. So the goal uh, will be to pre-accept the machine because in Rudder there's a workflow that needs to uh, you need to accept the machine when you have uh, added an agent on it. Uh, we could pre-accept the machine if it has been installed by Foreman. We could collect Foreman information because Foreman stores a lot of properties on machines, and it's usually physical properties. Well, on the virtual machines, virtual properties, but it's still for the physical machine, not the system. And we could have this information automatically uh, into Rudder to use them for configuration. And we could synchronize the uh, machine life cycle with Foreman, which was the goal uh, for, of the life cycle from the beginning. It was to create different rules uh, on machines depending on the state of the machine. If it is currently stalling, currently dying, 
currently uh, being um, uh, being removed. Uh, so you can have different uh, state of a machine, and you could synchronize the state with Foreman. Um, pulp, we could have a plugin to manage pulp and to automatically manage uh, channels uh, repositories uh, for by rudder, uh, depending on the machine. So the idea would be to, when you configure a new source of a uh, package on a machine, automatically add the source and then add it to pulp so that pulp could synchronize it and put it in your network uh, directly. So you don't, you wouldn't have to configure pulp to to use it. Um, it's not developed yet, so I think it will be the last one. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it could be normally standard of that like uh in the future uh they are talking about putting production for real right now, but now it's maybe more uh acceptable for them to probably yeah. it's very early for us it's probably one year or something. Yes. We don't those plugins we didn't uh, we didn't already uh do work to, to it's not what we really exactly do, but uh, yes, we, I think we'll choose the latest one. The latest one. Um, NGMT, we may create a plugin to generate um, uh, policies for MGMT agent. Uh, Alexi talked about this about it earlier. Uh, the idea is like we do for Windows, and we generate uh, DSC policies. We could generate MGMT policies and have the advantage uh, benefits of uh, MGMT. For example, its reactivity, the fact that it's very fast, or the fact that it works on some specific machines. Um, and yeah, it's again, it's not developed yet. We just have. Uh, we are going to, to to do a proof of concept very soon, uh, but nothing yet. Um, OpenScap, we could uh, automatically uh, transform OpenScap uh, policies into Rudder policies. That would make us able to, to assess security based on existing OpenScap rules, because already there's a lot of rules OpenScap that uh, exist that are already written, and you, we could take those rules and make them available directly within Rudder uh, without effort possible. Um, virtual agent. The virtual agent plugin is a notion of a, a new kind of agent that, that wouldn't be really an agent, but uh, something that would act as like an agent on the behalf of someone else. So for example, uh, the, a relay could act on the behalf of something that is behind this relay because uh, we couldn't write a real agent for some kind of machines. So for an example, we could uh, have an agent for a network device. It would be very hard for us to develop a real agent that runs on a switch or on a router, but we could have some virtual agent that would just use the API to configure the switch or to configure the router, but from another node, from somewhere else. And we could have the same for VMware and probably for other tools uh, for, for which we couldn't write directly agents. Um, so again, it's something that we didn't try yet, but we have a few ideas on how to do it. Um, okay, so any question about, uh, yes? Okay, uh, it depends on the kind of plugin. Okay. Usually new feature plugins are written in Scala because uh, the, the application, rather the main application is written in Scala. 
So that's uh, how we, we write them. Uh, many parts are written directly in Python or Bash or any language you like because integration plugin uh, often use just Rudder API. You don't have to be able to call Rudder API from the plugin, so you can use any language and call the API of something else. Again, you can use any language to write it. Yes. To speak with, uh, yes. Um, and then the second question is, uh, if there is a definition, uh, in documented definition about how plugin should interface with browser, let's talk just about the um, API, for example. Yes. Is everything documented? So if I started tomorrow to write a plugin, I had. Yes, there's an API documentation. Uh, the, it's fully documented in docs.rudder.io. So you have access to the API. Uh, as uh, just a short, a short version is that everything you can do in Rudder interface, you can do it from the API. So you can do almost anything. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. It's a long time you have an API, and there's no really, there's some new parts sometimes, but most of the API is stable. It hasn't changed since uh, a long time. It is documented. Yes. Yes. Hierarchy. Hierarchical uh, information source for mm -hmm. basically anything that you can okay. plug together with that. So uh, I thought it would be uh, interesting to see if possible to interface with. Uh, yes, probably, yes. And uh, use it probably to find their own emails. Yes, sure. So, <laughs> good idea. Any other question? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Have a question? Or? Oh, there will be group spots. Yeah. yeah, okay. And I don't know if there is on the, any other announcements. Or announcements about existing plugins? I don't think so, but uh, I don't remember everything. Okay. okay.